Hello there, sweet friends, and Happy New Year. Hope everybody is off to a great 2018. I wanted to hop on here today and show you guys some really cool things that I'm so excited about that I'm going to be putting in my shop here in the next week. So, my first thing I want to show you guys is these fabric bundles of all kinds of little fabric trims and ribbons, laces, pom-poms, um eyelets, all kinds of cool trims that I have saved from the depths of estate sale basements and thrift store bins. Um, yeah, I every time I go to a thrift store or an estate sale, I always check out the trims, the laces, and I always find them tucked away in small little corners and I feel like I need to rescue them. And I told you guys, I think I've said, you know, the ugliest trims, the ugliest ribbons, those are the ones that I'm drawn to. So what I have done is gone through my stash and um, carefully selected 18 different pieces, 19 if you want to count the, the wrapper, 18 different pieces that measure about 12 inches each. I tried to go a little over 12 inches that you would be able to use in your sewing projects, your crafting, your junk journals. And so these guys are actually already in the shop right now. So let me open one up and I'll show you guys what they look like. Okay, so this is what your fabric bundle will look like. And what I did was I just kind of secured it with and make sure this is in film here. There we go. I secured it with a one inch ring binder because I felt like this was just a really great way to package them and to kind of keep all your trims together, especially if you don't have a lot of trims and you don't have them in a bin or anything, which is actually the best way to do it is to just have very few. That way you'll be sure to use them and you don't get overwhelmed. But I just secured them with this one inch ring binder and it just makes it really easy to... Um, to kind of contain those trims and you could easily cut from the trim um, bundle with this little ring binder. And then I secured it with a piece of, and I, I don't want to call this velvet because it's not velvet. I think I saw on the package, and this is, this is um, vintage. I think I saw on the package that this was called like velvelour, I think, and it's a cross between velvet and velour. Anyway, it's about two and a quarter inches wide, and then I cut that to 12 inches, so this can be used also. I love using this um, in my journals just because of its width. And then it's secured with just some cotton embroidery thread that I have. Again, all of this has been salvaged from estate sales, thrift stores, things like that. So none of this I went out and bought brand new. Okay, so once you unwrap your your bundle, you'll have this little ring binder here in the center that's securing it. And then all of your trims are just kind of like hanging. And then all of your trims are just kind of secured there in the center. And I just felt like this made it a really easy way to store. If you had like a little hook or something, you could just hook this on. And then it would be really easy for you to just cut whatever you needed from your trim stash. And then let me open it up and I'll show you the types of trims you're going to get. Now, I made tried to make each one of these the exact same, but there was just... I just didn't have enough trim to make everyone the exact same. So I'll try to point out what ones I know each bundle has. Um, I know each bundle has this pom-pom, purple lavender pom-pom. I know each bundle will have some sort of a ruffle. This is like a satin ruffle, but I don't know like what color you'll have because I didn't have enough of just one color. There will be laces. And I know not each one gets the green lace, but I know each one gets the uh, white and gold. There's another larger piece of white lace, and I had like three different styles of that. There's this pom-pom trim. There is a piece of gathered lace, and I have a couple of different colors of that. Then there is this little decorative trim. Um, 
and I don't like I couldn't do all of the bundles with this one so there's a yellow version of this that your package may get and then there is whoops we might as well go ahead and do this there's this little dainty pink lace I'm gonna make sure I'm still in film here or in view here there and I'm pretty sure everybody gets one of those there is some eyelet and again I don't know what color you will get there may be navy blue there may be red there may be green. Everybody will get a piece of this yellow um, lace. And let me tell you about this yellow lace. This was the packaging that it came with. Um, and it was called Gaiety Water Repellent. It's nylon and acetate. And it was, I love it. I love using it. It's kind of got a stiffener in it. So it makes it really easy to handle. Um, oh, everybody does get one of these. This is a decorative trim. Make sure I'm still in focus here. Another piece of eyelet and I tried to give, I think the everybody gets a either a white or a cream colored piece of eyelet. Now this is kind of cool. This is, this is not vintage, but this was just some yarn type of trim and it has this fuzzy stuff and I have this fuzzy stuff all over my carpet it got stuck in my carpet and so now every time you walk around you see these blue fuzzies all throughout my house i hate carpeting everybody gets one of these um it's like a brown or a copper colored and it's got a little bit of shimmer on this edge right here and i just love the color of that it's kind of subdued everybody gets a piece of this rayon braided trim and it's super super delicate i love how soft it is and everybody gets a piece of this black um i'm sure this was not hand done i'm sure this was machine done and i don't know how old this is but i picked it up somewhere along my adventures and so everybody gets a piece of that and then probably my favorite, favorite, favorite is everybody's going to get a piece of this black fringe. Oh, this is so fun. I feel like I feel like I need to go put on a dress in the 1920s and be a flapper with this trim. I just oh, I love it. And I don't know how old this is. Um, I just know it's awesome. So one thing about that, the trim, the um, the fringy trim it comes with this clear thread that kind of holds the bottom together and when i was packaging it i tried to remove all of that clear it's like you'll you'll see if i didn't remove yours um it's just this little plasticky thread and you just pull it off and what it does is it allows this to fringe out so like I said, I tried to get everybody's off, but if I didn't, you'll just need to pull it off um, when you get it. So these are the trims that you'll get. And yeah, you can do all kinds of cool projects with these. You can sew them on your journal pages, add them as tag ties, uh, maybe put them into some of your sewing projects. I'm just in love with these. I love trims. And this was so fun to put these guys together because I got to actually go through my stash of trim and you know, look at some of that goodness that I had and, and try to get it out there and share it with you guys because I have way more trim than one person needs. So this is the trim and it is already in my Etsy shop. All right, so the next thing I am super, super excited about, let me make sure we're in focus here, is this whole mini book kit. When I did my um, Christmas journal, I got the inspiration from digging through my mini books. And I did a flip through where I showed you my mini books and showed you just the different things that I used to make them. And as I was, as I was going through this, I started to remember my mini book days or my mini album days. And I realized I have a ton of mini book supplies that I just um, I just have sitting there. And, and I thought, wouldn't this be cool if I were to put together some mini albums? And it's almost like a little chop shop, like I'm taking some brand new mini book supplies that I had in my stash. I'm taking some ones that I actually found at 
the Salvation Army, I think it was back in October, I found a ton of mini album. Um, somebody had put them, donated them to Salvation Army. And so there was just a ton of the chipboard pages and the rings and everything. So I grabbed those not knowing what I was going to do with them. And then I kind of took some of my rebooked supplies, like old books and, and things like that, and kind of made um, some mini albums. So I'm using these guys as my inspiration. And let me show you the ones that I have come up with that I'm going to put in my shop. Okay, so the first little batch that I have, these are ones that I've kind of treated like when I make a junk journal. Like I, I put a lot of time into coming up with like coordinating papers and I add lots of trims and stuff like that and use book pages and I, I really kind of went that extra little step to kind of finish these, even though they're not finished because you're going to put your own stuff in them. So these guys are what I'm going to call um, my my kind of done uh, mini books. So this one was inspired by this little book right here, The Little Trapper. And I found this image in an old coloring book and I put it on, this is actually a puzzle um, a big floor puzzle and so the front and the back are the big floor puzzle pieces and I painted them and all kinds of stuff and then in this one I just have a lot of scrapbook papers that you could put your photos or your stories I've got some kids book pages old kids book pages newer scrapbook papers um, envelopes and little things tucked inside and the way I bound this one is I just put a grommet on both sides and then I put my ring binder and then I just have some things hanging off of it so as I found out with my Christmas journal I started off with this size of a binder ring and yeah within like two days I was like mm, that's not gonna work so what I'll do is when I um, ship these out to whoever buys them I will actually include the larger ring so let me show you what the larger ring looks like. Uh, here's the larger ring this is the one I had to go to in my Christmas album so I will include a larger ring that way you if you need to move up to a larger ring you can you have that larger ring and then that'll leave you with an extra ring so if you want to make your own um, mini album someday you'll have a ring that you can that you can um, use for that and I love using the rings I think I've told you this a million times in the Christmas journal I love using the rings because it gives you the freedom of just opening it up, taking the pages out, putting pages in, moving them around in whatever order, and I just love that freedom. So this, these ring binders, I, I love, I love having journals that use that. So there's one. This is another one that, um, well actually let me do this one. So this is another one that has the ring, only what I did was I took the grommet and did the same thing like I did in that other one. But instead of a ring, I actually used thread. And my inspiration for this one was an old mini album that I made about this really cool winter that we had where we had so much snow. And I actually um, used thread and yarn to bind it together. And I love how it held it together. Um, and it didn't have that clunkiness of, Sometimes these can be kind of hard to maneuver. So once I had the book all made, I just used some um, some thread or actually it wasn't thread. It was like yarn or ribbon and that's how I bound it. So that was my inspiration for this one. And this book is kind of cool because I used an old Sesame Street book cover. Um, I actually used the book pages from that Sesame Street book and I glued them together to make them nice and thick. And then I used some tape to kind of hold them together. This is a this is a very raw book. And what I mean by raw is it is prepped, it is ready for you to add your artwork, your photos, your journaling, your collage. It has a layer of gesso on all of the pages. So the gesso I kind of colored with a little bit of um, cream colored paint. So it's very neutral, and then it's got the pages, the original book pages are showing through. So it is ready for any of your artwork 
um, any of your collaging that you want to do. I love this book. It's just so stinking cute and it's so easy to like, it's portable. It's just fits in the palm of your hand and this is expandable. So if you wanted to make this a larger book, if it becomes monstrous, like my Christmas journal, all you do is just untie and, and make your, your little loop here a little bit bigger. Then to bind this, so I don't know if you can see this, I actually on this back cover, I sewed and then I covered it up with a, with a pocket. I forgot how much I love this little book. Um, I sewed this on here with these cute little stitches. And then this is a piece of an old quilt. And, and it is old because it's falling apart. I have it upstairs in my, um, in my closet. And so I just took some of it that was falling apart. I mean, like it is literally tattered. And I ran it through my sewing machine and I just kind of made this, um, this trim out of that quilt and this is what holds it together and like I said this is what I would call a very raw book because it's just got the bones and it's ready for you to add whatever it is you want to add to it so this one is going to be in there and this is quite heavy I, I, I forgot how much I love this one this would be a great art journal if you were wanting to art journal and then the last one that I have that I put quite, quite a bit of stuff on is a an old Teletale book. It's called The Tagalong Shadow. And again, I was kind of thinking about this little trapper. I loved that theme of the little trapper. And so this book has the whole story in intact. Do you remember this pocket? This was from when I got my free motion um, foot on my sewing machine and I made this pocket. So I just put some little holes in it and I stuck it in and that's the first page you get when you open this little book. So yeah, there you go. Nothing goes to waste. And then there's some of that fringe that I have in my shop, only this is white fringe. Okay, so for this one, I just kind of added some pages that were and this is not my normal style, but they were they were store-bought scrapbook pages. And the reason why I do that is when you're making a mini album, it's I find it easier to use pages that are already um, the, the correct size, the correct um, heft of like the, the paper, um, the right colors. It's just, I don't know, something about mini albums. I treat them a little bit differently than I do like my junk journals, whereas junk journals all have colorful backgrounds and all kinds of mishmash stuff. The mini albums I do a little bit darker, I guess is what I want to say. And so you're going to see some journaling cards. You're going to see just some plain chipboard. Um, this is a piece from a mini album uh, kit that it's a nice thick, it's like cardboard and it's black. And then I did add a little bit of fun to this. So I had this old photo album and I took the pages and just kind of stitched around them and then put a little card inside of here. So this could be like, you could put photos in here or you could just journal on these cards. I think there are six in this book. And then I didn't go all out with my trims because again, these are kind of like, they're raw, they're bare, they're ready for you to add your stuff. It's kind of like with my Christmas journal where I went and once I had all my pages, then I went and I just added a little bit of stuff to the sides. I didn't over embellish them. That's kind of what I did here. I just added a little bit of stuff, some trim and some sewing down the sides, just, just to kind of give me a starting point. I added some cards in here just like in my Christmas journal so even though this says it's a birthday party you saw in my Christmas journal you don't have to you don't have to worry about what the card says because you're going to transform that into whatever you want it to be and I also added some envelopes in this journal and then just some again some store-bought things that I had scrapbooking supplies I really enjoyed doing this because I was able to use my my scrapbook stuff which I haven't used in forever. So yeah, that's this one right here. And the cool thing about this is if you wanted to use the pages, kind of like I use the pages um, 
for this little trapper book and I just kind of cut and collaged. You absolutely could because all you would have to do is rip the pages out. Like if you didn't want the story, just rip the pages out and you could use this as your ephemera to tell your story in this mini album. So there you go couple of pockets but it's pretty bare pretty bare by my standards so yeah so there you go and this is a one and a quarter inch um zutter bind it all ring binder thing okay so those are the ones that i've kind of added some stuff to now let me show you these other ones so i went really bare on these other ones what i mean by that is i tried to keep everything at a minimum like I did not use a lot of color I did not use a lot of texture because I want this to be a blank canvas make sure this is in the okay, oh. I want this to be a blank canvas for you I want you to be able to do what I did with my Christmas journal and just take those pages and turn them into something beautiful so I tried not to put too much other stuff to um, clog your clog your brain so these guys are inspired by this book right here, which was my um, son's battle and camp book that I made with the corrugated cardboard. So the, the size and everything is just like this. And then I used um, ring binders. And again, I will give you the larger ones I have to make sure I have enough of these larger ones but I will give you the larger ones in case you need to size up so for these guys I just added and they are exactly the same so I'll just show you one I just added it's very stark it's very blank now this would be a um, this would have been like a mini album actually I think this is one of the ones I got at Salvation Army this is a mini album kit and it came with these these boards and they're kind of thick chipboard and this was this reminds me of like when I used a board book a child's board book to make just the thickness and the heftiness of this book made it so fun to look through and so fun to work on so I added some of these in there and they're blank they're ready for your ink your paint your collage um, whatever it is you're gonna put on on there then I added I had to add some fun stuff okay this is really cool so this is a metric um, converter so I had to cut it down to make it work check this out it slides because that's how you would convert and so this became a tag isn't that the cutest I love it so I had so much fun making that and modifying it so that it would fit in this journal and then I just used some fabric from a fabric sample book and just stitched it on there so that I had enough room to make those rings. This was a trick that I used in the little um, photo album that I sold here recently on Etsy where I took this piece of paper and then, oh my dog is barking, and I took um, this folded up card and kind of made it wrap around and tucked in so you have like double the amount of journaling. This is a fun little, this came from a mini book kit again, and I had to modify it, cut it down a little bit. This is a vintage like flash card that opens out an envelope that I had to cut down a little bit. Another piece of chipboard. This is a little flimsier. Um, and I think this was, oh gosh. I want to say it's called grunge board and it was something that came out recently like I don't know within the last five years or something it might have been by by Tim Holtz and it was this special type of chipboard that was supposed to really be susceptible to taking ink and paint and glue and all that stuff I don't know I never tried it but like I said I found it at the it's got a funky smell um I found it at that Salvation Army and I thought well if nobody wants it I'm gonna take it um, okay, so this is a super fun thing. Okay, so I had this frame, this cardboard frame, and I have, I don't know if you can see this or not, but this is a transparency. So I have a lot of old transparencies. Shh, shh, shh. My doggy's crying. So I have a lot of old transparencies. So what I did was I stitched the transparency. I folded it in half. So you have a pocket and you can slide something in this pocket. And then I sewed this frame around it. 
So I thought that was kind of cool. This is just some ledger, like card stock. And then some index cards. This was just some fun little pockets that I picked up along the way. And I've just kind of had them in my stash. This is the packaging to that um, those flashcards I had a few minutes ago. And so what I did was I just took the envelope that they came in because it was kind of falling apart. I backed it. I glued it to a piece of book page and then stitched around it. And this just kind of makes a fun little fold out. And then here's the back right here. So these two are exactly the same. It's just the covers are a little bit different. Okay. So this is... Um, a mini book kit that I had in my stash and I had actually started it and then I never finished it. So it's a binder and I went ahead and I painted it white because I guess I thought I was going to use it for something. I don't know what I was going to use it for, but it, anyway, it's just kind of sat there and I never did do anything to it. So I have this old game piece. I think this is from the uh, A Game of Life and, and it is old, old, old. So I glued it on here and attached a button and this kind of becomes the front cover and it's really textural so I thought that was kind of cute. And then to um, make this usable and then I stitched, you can see where I stitched the button on the back. To make this usable I traded out some of these cardboard um, pages because it would have been too thick and I want you to be able to add your own stuff. So cardboard pages and then I kind of had a game theme going on with this one but I tried to tone it down, lots of whites, lots of creams. Um, a pocket. This is a piece of textured wallpaper that I turned into a little book. Index card. Here is my pop of color. I just had to use this trim. I love that. Some more chipboard. Some bingo cards. Okay, so check this out. This was something that you could buy when you were doing mini albums, and they were these acrylic um, clear pages. And so let me show you a couple of journals that I have that I used them. Okay, here's one. Here's a book that I used. So the cool thing, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but you can glue pages and stuff on here. You can stamp on here with like your stays on ink. I even was able to glue little jewels and stuff on, and then it you see through to the other side. So yeah, it's like they were just so fun because you could see whatever was going on in the background. Here's where I did some circles and then so whatever you put on the front you would have to mimic that on the back at least the shape on the back. So yeah that's that's why these things are so fun. Just oh, just love them and they're so heavy and they're just very hefty in your hand. So and here's another one. This was one of my Halloween albums, and so the cover was this, and so you can see that, and then this was the back cover, and there was one of my big rings right there. So I included one of those. Then this is just some old packaging from some Hallmark doilies, another piece of chipboard. Here was a little um, photo album pocket page that I just kind of stitched and added some holes to. Another index. This one's really thick, and that's a metal tab. Some fold-out cards. An envelope that I have some trim on. And then this is a really cool piece. So this was a book that I had started and then just never finished. So it's a fold-out, and it has a little window. So I did some modifications last night to make it work, um, and just kind of added some, had to tone it down a little bit, added some book page and some trim. But yeah, this could be a fun little element that you could make um, really interactive. And so there you go. That's a binder, very easy because you could take things in and out of. Then I had, this is another one. This is just a little kit and it had black pages. So in addition to the black pages, I added some fun little um, doodads, but tried to keep it very minimal so you could do your own work. And then this is like a one inch um, bind, binding ring. Okay, so tag, black paper, wouldn't white ink look pretty on that? Um, just some scrapbook paper, a little envelope with a tag. 
This is just a piece of transparency. So you could do all kinds. Of, it's not thick like the acrylic, but it still um, it takes stamping very well if you use like the stays on. Black paper tags, envelopes, cards that I've cut and they'll be able to fold out. Here's some of that black fringe. Another transparency. This is a cool little card. So this is flocked like velvet. And then it opens up and it had this cool little cord. And I just left that on there because I thought that would be kind of fun little decoration. This is an actual piece of transparency that was already pre-decorated. So I just cut it down to have it fit. Another little card. Oh, and I love this one. So I added a little tag to this. So like it folds out and it has a little tag. Okay, so this little piece right here, this little tag right here, I sewed a, one of my quilting triangles and then it just became like a little tuck spot for a tag. So I stuck a tag. And then this is a envelope that you can see through. I think I got this from a flow book a long time ago and then there's your raw chipboard as your covers so that's a teeny tiny little one all right last one so this is the one i'm most excited about and this is the one that i'm still working on so actually i'm excited about all of them so if you remember this book where i made it out of cds and i totally freaking love this book i've forgotten how much i love this book so I don't have any CDs, but what I did have was some coasters. And look, oh my gosh, they're about the same size. I didn't even realize that. And so I'm turning this into a book that will be, you could turn into something like this. So I attached this little flower that's a golden book um, die cut. And this is an old golden book. And then I just secured some buttons on there. And then I went through and found anything that was round. These are some tags that my daughter brought me back from Iceland when she went to Iceland. And she brought me back a package of these tags. Little envelope. I'll put some tags in there. Um, with this one, I added some non-circular things. So there's another coaster. And then I tried to add some fun things like this is an old game piece. And I wanted it to stay all within that, the diameter of that circle so that, you know, it all looked like it was like this. It all just looks like it's one circle. Um, this one has a tally card in here, an old tally card. Oh my gosh, that's very old. This is a piece of cardboard that I took some pages. I think this is a page from Peter Pan and I glued it on there just um, nice and thick and so you could put something on the back. This. Oh my gosh. Okay. So this is an old um, oh my gosh. Sewing cards. Do you remember sewing cards? So this is an old sewing card. Let me show you. All right, so I have a stash. Some of those aren't old, but I have a stash of these old sewing cards. Oh my gosh, I love sewing cards. I'm a and I, these are so precious that I have not, I haven't used them. That's how that's how precious they are. And if you don't, if you're not familiar with a sewing card, you would have yarn, and you would go through and sew in the little holes. And so I found a little. Um, box of these at my thrift store here in my town that I live in probably about five years ago and I've held on to them since then so whoever gets this you um, yeah you're the first person that's getting one of my sewing cards okay so you could actually stitch around there oh my god that would be so precious okay this is another die cut from a golden book and I just backed or I put um, some scrapbook paper on the front another envelope this is a game piece from, I'm going to say 1980s because these are shirt tails and I'd been hanging on to this forever because I love shirt tails, um, but it was circular and I thought, well, it would fit perfect in here. So what I did was it had a hole in the center. I just put a little brad, but you could easily take the brad out and then you could put whatever you wanted on here. And then a wacky playing card. And then there's the back. 
So with this, I still need to work on it. That's actually what I'm gonna do today. I want to go through, and if you see on mine, I have these little tags hanging off and I put some clips and stuff hanging off. So I wanna go through and add some little tags and stuff hanging off of the circles so that it's dangly like this. Cause that's part of the fun of this one is that it's just so dangly and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even know what to look at. So I wanna add some of those onto here too um, and kind of make it dangly. But again, I wanna keep it very stark so that you can add your own stuff. So that's what I have planned for today. I also have some book covers from this book called The Tall Book of Mother Goose. And are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? <gasps> Look at the end papers. Oh my God. I, do, I don't even, I can't even speak. Like this is, I don't even know. This is beautiful. So my thought was to cut this in half and this could be a mini book cut this in half and this could be a mini book and it would be something similar to um, something similar to this probably just be a little bit smaller but oh my gosh so I don't know I don't know if I'm gonna have time to work on this today or not but yeah that's that's kind of what I got going on so all right let's talk so tassels Tassels are already in my Etsy shop. Um, mini albums, I'm still working on them. So here's what we're gonna do. I go back to work on Tuesday, which is tomorrow. I've got most of my mini albums done. I just need to get them photographed and get the listings in Etsy. So how about we do this? Mini albums I will post in my Etsy shop on, ooh, let's do 9 a.m. next Saturday, whatever next Saturday is. I don't know what next Saturday is. Today's the first Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, one, two, three, four, five, six. So is it the sixth? Saturday the sixth. Saturday the sixth, Central Standard Time, 2018, January, nine o'clock. I will post my mini albums in my Etsy shop. Guys, this video has gone on forever. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I truly love you guys. Do something creative today. Bye.